Hello, Joyce and Anthony aka JJ here with part two of the modifiers. Last week was generate, this week is deform modifiers. So the deform modifiers only changes the shape of an object without adding new geometry. And I'm going to come back to the armature modifier last. But first I wanted to go to the hook modifier. The hook modifier is used to deform stroke points using another object, usually an empty or a bone, but it can be any object. For this example, I used a empty and just played around with, um, with this modifier. So what I'm moving right now is I made um, the feathers on the top of her hat, I made a separate layer and I just, cause I knew I was gonna be using the hook modifier, so I just added another layer and as you see, these are all the different options you can play around with when it comes to the hook modifier. The second modifier is the Latisse modifier. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. So after some research, I found out that you actually need to add a Latisse like I did, adjust it over your object. So for I'm gonna um, put the box over her and then as I was watching tutorials I noticed how they would kind of squish the box so it was just kind of like a plane that's what I'm doing right now I'm squishing it and then if you go to edit mode you're able to move it around I kind of think of it Latisse as a liquify modifier that I use in procreate I think it's very similar and again I could have subdivided to make the sections even smaller I guess even kind of like box deform it's very similar to both of those the next modifier is one of my favorites the noise modifier this modifier changes the value of one of more stroke point properties like location, strength, thickness, or UV texture positioning by adding varied values that make the line unstable and noisy. To me, I think it gets like kind of like a watercolory effect. And I've, I've talked about this, I actually made a video about the noise modifier a couple weeks ago. You can see there's five different options where you can change it. Position changes the strength of the noise effect over the point location. Strength, the one I just played with, um, it changes the strength of the noise effect over the point strength opacity. Thickness changes the strength of the noise effect over the point thickness. UV changes the strength of the noise effect over the point UV rotation. And my favorite to play around with is the noise scale, which changes the control of the noise frequency scale. And if you go to influence, you can change the layer. And I changed it to the skin tone because I didn't want the whole noise effect to be applied to the whole drawing. Next is the offset modifier. The offset modifier changes the stroke's location, rotation, or scale starting from the object's origin. So as you can see, I was playing around with it before I started to record and it's, you're kind of adding keyframes. So the green means this is the position after. So I, this is where I go in and I adjust the numbers. It changes orange and then once you press the, the little button on the right, that's where the keyframe changes. So I decided to play around with this scale. The smooth modifier changes the value of one or more stroke point properties like location, strength, thickness, or UV texture positioning trying to maintain similar values that make the line fluid and smoother. You can see I'm playing a lot with repeat. And this is the number of smoothing iterations equivalent to the ex executing the smooth tool multiple times. High values can reduce the animation performance, the FPS, frames per second. I mean, as I'm playing around with it, it's very subtle, but I definitely see where it smooths out, smooths out my lines in the drawing. The 
the thickness modifier as the name suggests it changes the stroke point thickness and I was playing around with the thickness factor as you can see the lower you go the thinner your lines get and obviously the higher you go the thicker your lines get Next is the time offset modifier and I wanted to use this animation that I drew I think two years ago and I brought it over as a mp4 and then I used the trace image to grease pencil option. It's not the clearest but it's just I think it works well for this example. So the time offset modifier offsets the position of the, listen to me, the grease pencil keyframes. And this is really great if you want to loop animations. There are three different mode options are regular, reverse, and fixed frame. For me, I'm just gonna keep it on regular just to show the example. And then to do the loop, you're going to click custom range. And then my animation is 21 frames, so I'm gonna put it at 22 and then show you the play. So it's just a continuous loop. And last but not least is the armature modifier. So the armature modifier is used for building skeletal systems for animating the poses of characters and anything else which needs to be posted. By adding an armature to an object, this object can be deformed accurately so that geometry does not have to be animated by hand. I, I moved this to the end because this is actually my first time when I was recording this using the armature. For me, I normally, as you can see, the um, the animation you saw previously that was hand drawn frame by frame, and I need to I need to learn armature because I feel like it's really important and it will really really speed up my workflow. But like I said, I moved it to the end because I'm least confident about it, and I played around with it. Now I was actually watching a tutorial as I was filming this <laughs> step by step. I just I I learned a lot about where you need to add the armature. Um, the basics and then making a pose and I ended up using the armature modifier to play around with the head and again I don't even know if 100% did this correctly but I think this was a really great like put your feet in the water when it comes to using the armature as always thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you learned something new about the deform modifiers and this is Joyce and Anthony aka JJ until next time